Good morning. Um, <laughs> it's strange how things seem to go in, in loops and at the moment the loop seems to be internet connections and difficulties with that. <laughs> I think um, so for some reason um, I had a little difficulty there with the phone. The phone wasn't letting me onto the site so we're on an iPad so who knows what might happen. Um, obviously not just a little difficulty with <laughs> but also with the hair sticking out in all directions but we're all getting used to that a little bit and maybe a hairdresser will fix me soon. So welcome and uh, cramming down from a little panic of not actually being able to get on here. So we're on again. Um, last time I had internet connection problems where everything failed and cut off and all the rest of it. So be prepared for the unexpected um, if that is at all possible. So it's Friday, Friday the 21st of May and looking forward to the weekend, looking forward to all that brings. With some relief all round, I'm sure that looking at the weather and uh, the rain coming down, that at least if we have planned to have people around, we, we don't have to be in the garden. The umbrellas or the parasols used for umbrellas can be put away and we can at least be inside in shelter. Of course, we're also now allowed to have people stay overnight um, and that's a huge bonus and a huge boost. Uh, I don't know if you've gone that far yet or thought about it. I certainly haven't had people to stay overnight yet. However, um, Juma has. Juma has got two little friends. She's got Cora and Poppy with her for the next week. They arrived last night. So you may see a couple of Cairn Terriers appear within these next few reflections. Um, quite often, Poppy, the, the younger one, will be sitting along the top of the settee. Cora, you're more likely to hear because she'll be snoring and Juma's just keeping that <laughs> on distance. She's got that two metre social distancing thing going, I think, and just please leave me in peace. So who knows? Um, it's nice to have that freedom and it's nice to be able to have guests, four legged, two legged, however they come. Good to have them stay over and be with us. Things are moving forward. And so perhaps our weekend plans can change from what they were before. We can plan more, we can plan to go and see people and we can plan to do things with people and do different things and better things perhaps than we've been doing for a while and not better in that they are improved but just because it's a change and that feels better for us to be doing things a bit differently. But the weekend also holds lots of other opportunities and, and options for us, not just of having people to stay or people come round, but well, Maybe there's great excitement in your house and amongst your group. Maybe you're going to be watching the Eurovision Song Contest. Maybe you've already started and looked at the, the, the semi-finals or whatever it is that they need to do, some groups do to get in. But the talk is all about Eurovision, even on the news. So maybe you're going to be watching that or maybe you are going to be deliberately avoiding that. Maybe you've got other plans. Maybe it's plans to, well, for some of us, maybe to watch a little bit of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland. That opens tomorrow. Um, the outgoing moderator, um, very outgoing moderator, thankfully, this past year, Martin Fair, um, gave his resume of his past year, which I've yet to catch up on. And tomorrow morning at 10, the new moderator will be installed. The moderator-elect, as is at the moment, who, as you all know, is, of course, the right honourable Lord Wallace of Tankerness. Jim Wallace, an elder in the Church of Scotland, is to be our new moderator. An elder, which is great and a great opportunity to help to show what eldership is all about and what we can all do. We don't have to be ministers to be involved. I did wonder, because um, our, min our moderators are called the Right Rev, and he's already the Right Honourable, I'm not sure if it's the right right honourable and if a right right takes you back the way you came or, or what, but I'm sure they'll sort that one out. But maybe that's it. Or maybe tuned in to watch some of the events happening because the General Assembly this year, it has got hard decisions. We, we've been saying that for so many years now. Hard decisions to make because we really do need to reform um, ourselves completely. I think we've kind of, we've, we've tinkered with the deck chairs Although, of course, some churches won't have chairs at all. Um, so we've tinkered with the pews. We've tinkered with um, moving them, recovering them, um, all sorts of things with them. 
but the time really is past, I think, and therefore needs to be grasped right now to do things differently. And that's a big part of what will be discussed at General Assembly in these next few days. And it's going to affect every congregation, every congregation in the Church of Scotland. And with a bit of good fortune and a, and a favourable wind, perhaps it will also affect the congregations of our ecumenical friends around us as we we learn to work together. Is that, and I dare even say that, that we, we work together. And um, We have different ways of worship, we have different ways of organising, but we can still work together, share our resources. But um, sometimes we say that's a step too far. Well, so far we've not taken any steps, probably not last 50, 70 years, that are going to actually help us to survive. So, yeah, I will be watching some of that General Assembly um, tomorrow afternoon and in the, the coming, coming days next week. So if you're interested, go to the church website, Church of Scotland website, you can get on there. Um, it, it can be all consuming and you can just sit there for hours or sometimes it can be the point of, is it not coffee time yet? Let's have another one. So see how you feel. But that's another opportunity. The opportunity that comes alongside that, um, fortuitously, I think, this year for us, is that Sunday is also Pentecost. The Pentecost Sunday when we celebrate the gift of God's Spirit in new ways, in different ways. The gift of God's Spirit which gave us, gave them, and should give us, a courage of our faith, an assurance of our faith, a confidence in our faith. And not a confidence in ourselves in our faith, but a confidence in what God can do through us in faith. And that really is the bottom line of Pentecost. We can discuss all the, the ins and outs and all the bits and pieces, which we'll do on Sunday to a fair extent. But it's a celebration that God actually hasn't given up on us. God didn't give up on the disciples as they hid away in a locked room, and he doesn't give up on us either. And although we feel we've been hidden away in locked rooms for over a year now, we've sometimes, in our faith, hidden ourselves away for an awful lot longer. And that spirit that we celebrate at Pentecost is still with us. It's never been anywhere else but with us. Always been here in the world in God's creation. So we celebrate Pentecost on Sunday. And for the church, it occasionally does happen that Pentecost and the General Assembly collide, as it were. And I suppose my prayer is that they, they collide in a really big way this year. And that we see, well, sparks fly, but sparks of such hope and passion and vibrancy and encouragement and assurance and positivity, all those things that we can leave the rest behind. And if that happens, there's going to be a lot of pain coming up. I said this last year and I said this a couple of years because that really is how life is. We need to make changes and change hurts. But if we don't, we're going to hurt an awful lot more in the, the very near future now. So it's for ministers to perhaps let go a little bit and let God. It's for congregations certainly to be part of that and to realise that things are not going to be the same. We really should know that by now. <laughs> We've been telling folk in that church for such a long time. We really, really have had that practical theology part now of lockdown. We know we can't go back to the same things again. And, and that includes going back to church and having your same seat in your same place because we need to make changes and we need to do it right now. So, in what way are we going to do this? Are we going to be dragged screaming or left behind? Or are we going to really draw in our breath, breathe in God's spirit and say, we must do this for God. We must do this for the Church of Jesus Christ. We must do this through the Holy Spirit, which is with us. So yeah, it's an exciting weekend. A scary week next week for um, all of us involved in and affected by the decisions that will be made next week. I'm not a commissioner, I wouldn't have a vote, but George Owenson, an elder of Dalgetty, and Hannah Dunlop, also an elder, and our youth rep for Presbytery, will have that opportunity to speak. Hannah doesn't get a vote just yet, but George does. Um, so let's hope that all those with votes, but also all those with voices are heard to drive 
the faith in our church forward and to make sure that we vote not politically as he may well do in Eurovision did I say that? that never happens but that we actually vote for what is true and right and the best without looking to what we can get out of it because we know what we'll get out of it we'll get God's peace and that love and mercy and grace that is beyond our understanding but it's not beyond our reach God will be with us in the General Assembly. God will be with us on Sunday in our worship. So, however you spend the weekend, make sure that you realise that no matter rain or shine, God's church will continue. It's just a question if we're going to be part of that with going full steam ahead or if we're going to be dragged screaming. The better way. Well, I don't have to tell you that. Let us pray. God, we come to you and pray that you will come to us with your spirit. Come as the rains water and refresh the earth. Come and revive us with the living water that assures life and growth and colour, that ensures a vibrancy in us that helps your creation shine with love and hope. God, come with your spirit in words in stories, in scripture, in debates, in conversations, in banter, to bring us together with understanding of other opinions, to learn and discover the way ahead that brings benefit to all. God, come with your spirit, that all we do will be by your inspiration, working to relieve the poverty of this world, a poverty of material goods, but also a poverty of the essentials of life, a poverty of mercy and grace, and a poverty of care and compassion. Holy Spirit, come. Clear for us the path ahead. Help us to see it clearly and know it is good to journey there. Or just clear the next step and give us courage to take that step knowing that as we do, the next step will become clear. Lord Jesus, your promise of a helper for us, sent from God, was fulfilled at Pentecost and is still assured. Give us faith and give us strength. Help us to let go of all that holds us back from following you and help us to speak out loud to speak out loud our questions and our doubts and our concerns so that they can be faced. And God, work in us that we will feel the fear and follow you anyway. That we will learn to trust step by step, not needing the full plan, but trusting that you know and you will tell us when we need to know. And God, that is hard for us to trust and not to see the full plan before we say yes. Jesus, forgive us through God's spirit when we reckon that we can sort everything ourselves when everything is not ours to fix. And forgive us for not helping to sort what we can be part of when our preferences, our entrenched ideas get in the way and we seek to protect them rather than look to you. God, we pray for congregations facing enormous changes. For all congregations who will all face change. Lord, be with our General Assembly in these coming days. We give thanks for Martin Fair our moderator of this past year, who has been so involved and active and open. And we pray for the moderator-elect, for Jim Wallace, that as he comes into office, so he will know your presence. Know that our prayers are with him and for him. Know that he is upheld in all that he says and does. Lord, give him courage and grace and peace. 
We pray for all the fora of the church, for Faith Nurture Forum, Faith Impact Forum, for all the committees and groups and working parties, for all conveners, for all who work to help our church continue and to work well. And we pray for the commissioners to General Assembly 2021, for attention, for patience, for involvement, for care and hope, for a realisation of who we are and whom we serve, Jesus Christ, our Lord, God the Creator of all, through the Holy Spirit. God, may this week end hold for all of us some rest and some peace and some excitement, conversations, meetings with friends. May this weekend hold for us what we need. And however and with whomever we spend it, may we spend it with hope and with love and may we spend it in Jesus' name to be all that you, Lord, know we can be, where we are, as we are. Lord, we give to you today and the weekend ahead. Lord, grant us your peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thinking of this morning and writing that, I think there's a, a phrase that went through my mind. Step by step, we're moving forward. Little by little, we're gaining ground. So there's your earworm for the rest of the day and see how long it takes you to find the, the first line of that chorus or what it's called. Step by step, we are moving forward. Let's hope we move together in that. Have a wonderful weekend and you may just be able to be so poppy just coming up to get her place of rest. It won't be that peaceful in the man's for the next week because I now have three dogs looking to see and look out for suspicious passerby passers-by who not so suspicious but maybe they're just looking for a walk so it could be noisy in this man's for the next few days <laughs> but it'll be fun i hope you enjoy your time too god bless <laughs>